Welcome to the Persecution Report. I'm Greg Musselman. Coming up, just when it appeared that life was becoming normalized for Christians in Iraq, numerous attacks have shattered those hopes. Also, a father and daughter are released from a Pakistani jail after more than a year behind bars. I'm thankful to God he released me from jail. Later, this Christian in Laos has been arrested and almost beaten to death for his Christian activities. They hit my head, they kick my soda, and they kick my bottom, and also my chest. Those stories and more are coming up on the Persecution Report. Five churches, a Christian school, and another Christian site were bombed within a month in the northern Iraqi city of Mosul. In the first incident, a group of approximately 10 gunmen entered the church of St. Ephraim and ordered those inside to leave and placed explosives around the building. When the explosives detonated, the building was completely destroyed. Half an hour later, the attackers proceeded to another church and set off more explosives. Although five believers were inside the building, no one was injured. Meanwhile, assailants threw grenades at a Christian school, killing a baby girl and injuring five teenagers. Explosives were also detonated the same day at two other churches in the city. A few weeks later, three people were killed when a bomb hidden in a cart of vegetables blew up outside the Chaldean Church of St. George. Thousands of believers have fled Mosul and other areas of Iraq in recent months due to ongoing threats and persecution. The body of a 23-year-old Somali convert from Islam to Christianity, Momin Abdul Karim Youssef, was discovered in Mogadishu's Yakshia district. Members of the Al-Shabaab and Islamic militant group apprehended Youssef and searched his home for Christian material after a 15-year-old Muslim boy accused Youssef of trying to convert him to Christianity. In an attempt to extract evidence against him and gain information about other Somali Christians, the militants knocked out all of Youssef's front teeth and broke several of his fingers. They then shot him twice in the head and discarded his body on an empty residential street. Now, since it's unknown whether Youssef disclosed any information during the torture, the underground Christians who knew him have relocated for their safety. Meanwhile, a Somali believer living in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, was poisoned by an unknown assailant. 38-year-old Abdur Rahman Haji Omar died the next morning at a local hospital. Omar is mourned by his three children. A Russian Orthodox priest, 34-year-old Father Daniil Sosoyev, was gunned down by a masked man in his church in southern Moscow. The assailant entered the St. Thomas Church and asked for the priest and then shot him. He died on the way to the hospital. Local Christians and officials believe that Father Daniil's murder was religiously motivated. He regularly received death threats in recent years for criticizing Islam and evangelizing among Muslims. Father Daniil is survived by his wife and three children. Please ask the Lord to supply his loved ones with the peace and grace as they mourn for him. And pray that Christians in Russia will be encouraged by his faithful example. Golshir Masih and his 20-year-old daughter Sandul, who were falsely accused of desecrating the Quran in Pakistan, have been released from prison. The two Christians in Faisalabad district were set free after 14 grueling months in prison on those false charges. The attorney for Golshir and Sandul said the case was another example of how Pakistan's blasphemy laws can be used to harass innocent Christians. C said the inmates beat him at least five times since his arrest on October 23, 2008. His daughter was detained two weeks earlier. Sandul thanked everyone who prayed and advocated on her and her father's behalf. I'm thankful to God. He released me from jail. I'm thankful to VOM who, who helped my family, me and my father in the court and outside the court. And I'm thankful to brother and sisters, those who prayed for my release and wrote me letters when I was in prison. God bless all of you. And we encourage you to continue to keep Sandul and her family in your prayers and pray that the hardships they endured in Pakistan will draw them closer to Jesus Christ and that they will continue to be a light to those in their community. We now travel to the Southeast Asian nation of Laos where Christians have been arrested, forced at gunpoint to renounce their faith and in some cases even killed. Yet despite these hardships, the church in this mainly Buddhist and animist nation is growing because of the courage of believers like the man you'll meet in our next report. Here's Andrew Boyd from our partner, Release International. 
Laos is mainly Buddhist, and the Buddhists have had their fair share of persecution too. Today, the communist authorities have turned their attention to Christianity. They regard the faith as a foreign religion, specifically an American religion, imported into Laos to undermine their communist revolution. Laos embraced communism when its North Vietnamese neighbor defeated America to unite the country under the hammer and sickle. Like Vietnam, the authorities believe the United States is supporting Christians as a way of continuing its campaign against communism. So some Christians, especially those who obey Christ's command to share their faith, are regarded as enemies of the state. Timothy's children were dying until a Christian pastor prayed for them and they recovered. Timothy, who was an animist, became a Christian, and now he, too, prays for the sick. The police arrested him for bringing foreign religions to Laos and beat him almost to death. When I am in the jail, that very small room, and the dark room, and no air inside, very, very bad smell, because night toilet, room there. When we lie down or sleep, we cannot sleep. They are eight prisoners there and I share Christ to them. So five of them uh, really see Christ as their Lord. What happened to you when they found out that you were sharing your faith with the other prisoners and leading them to Jesus? After I shared Christ to some prisoner there, and the police took me to interrogate one more time, they said that I bring people to know Christ. I pay money for them and ask them to be the member of Christian and deal against the government. I said, no, I didn't do that. And they hit my head. They kick my shoulder and they kick my bottom and also my chest. They asked me to sign a piece of paper that said that uh, to stop to be Christian because Christian is not good or not right for Lao, for Lao people. I, I didn't sign because of my faith. Pastor Timothy, not his real name, has been jailed several times, but he still shares his faith and has to travel by night to care for secret believers in many churches. Amen. One miracle I, I see that one patient, that he go to hospital and he didn't get help, he didn't get better, and also he went to enemies, and enemies cannot help. So he come to God, and I pray, I just pray, but God doing that thing, and the miracle with that patient, and many people see that uh, Jesus is God, is true God, and many people want to become Christian to accept Jesus as their Lord. Many of the evangelists in Laos are uneducated men going from village to village to share with others the faith that has gripped their hearts. Timothy's story and that of other persecuted Christians in the neighboring country of Vietnam are featured on the DVD, Enemies of the State. And you can order this DVD by going to persecution.net, clicking on the resource tab and then going to the online catalog tab, or you can call our office at one 888 298-6423. Remember, when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. Thanks for watching the Persecution Report. Goodbye and God bless. For more information on the ministry of the Voice of the Martyrs and ways in which you can help the persecuted church, please visit our website at persecution.net. That's persecution.net.